What's going on, everybody? This is Clydean Fair. Let's talk about War Tales Ghost Pack Edition. So I've gotten a couple of requests for me to cover how to fight the Ghost Pack or how I fight the Ghost Pack. So I decided to do you one better. So I went ahead and started a new run for just for this video so I could go Ghost Pack hunting with an early game composition just to prove that it's easily doable once you hit, nah, I'd say at least level three. I only used five units, which means I had my starting four and then I recruited a warrior because I wanted a little bit more damage output. Generally, by the time you're level three or four, I assume, at least in my own experience, I'm normally pushing five or six units. So I went ahead and went with the five. Another thing is that this is on free scaling. So as long as you're not go playing region bound and going into places where you shouldn't be you won't find yourself in a ghost pack that is realistically harder than this okay now to get into the overall strategy you have to think of the ghost pack as essentially a regular wild animal attack and if you don't do this for wild animal attacks you may want to start doing this first and foremost wild animals are bigger than regular human units. So utilize the terrain and choke points to your advantage. First things first, I took a look of the lay of the land here and I decided that it would be best for me to fight in towards the middle here to utilize these rocky outcrops and this natural choke point to try and get as many animals stuck as I possibly could. Notice how I didn't go towards a particular edge of the map and I made sure that there was actually terrain to my back. This is because the ghost pack will always have two rounds of reinforcements that will come in from the foggy edges of the map. Now, will they all pop up on one particular foggy edge side? Well, if your back's there, yes, yes, they will. There are two reinforcement waves. The first one is just going to be ghost wolves and ghost boars. And the second one will contain the nightmare, which is this goat horse abomination thing. Yes. Anyway, the nightmare needs to be defeated for you to fully defeat the ghost pack. However, the nightmare comes after two reinforcement waves and it also has its own terror mechanic. So we'll touch base on that later. For right now, just to get to where the nightmare spawns, you're going to want to juggle aggro as well as monitor terror levels. So what terror is, is every time you get hit by a ghost pack animal, you acquire one terror stack. And at five stacks, your unit will flee the battlefield. In order for us to actually beat the ghost pack, we need to, you know, not run away from the ghost pack. So how do you manage terror? Well, the easiest way to do it is actually to not kill units. Let me expand upon that. Whenever you defeat a ghost pack unit, you reduce your terror stacks by three. We are only really generating terror stacks on our main tanks because we're utilizing the environment and choke points to the best of our abilities. And we are damaging down these ghost pack units with our three other units here, our archer, our ranger, and our warrior. So as long as we don't finish off these units and get the last hits on my swordsman or my brute, my brute and my swordsman will no longer have as many terror stacks and they'll be fine for another round since they're only taking one or two hits every round due to choke points. Now the limiting factor isn't terror stacks, it's my health and armor, which is completely reasonable considering these animals don't do that much damage and I'm perfectly content doing it this way. Moving on. Now now that we've got this handled, let's take a look at the Nightmare. The Nightmare has this interesting mechanic that is called Binding Terror, or Binding Trauma, Binding something. Binding of Terror, yes. So the Nightmare will give a debuff to two units called Binding of Terror. Binding of Terror will automatically generate three stacks of terror on your unit at the end of its turn. As you can see, this can quickly get out of hand. So how do we manage this? Well, Binding of Terror gets removed if the two units that have Binding of Terror stand next to each other at any point during one of their turns before it triggers the terror stacks, which means make sure you're able to run your units next to each other, which means don't get every unit engaged in combat while you're doing this. The biggest takeaway is make sure that you're utilizing choke points as much as you possibly can when it comes down to fighting the ghost pack. This is a lot easier if you use a spear that is a pikeman build. I didn't use one for this fight because I didn't want to use one as a crutch and I wanted to show that it is possible without using that. But it will make this fight so much easier to actually have, you know, a choke point maker by simply stabbing
fighting a wolf or a boar with the spear wall ability and they stop in their tracks and you're instantly making a choke point right there. It's all about battlefield control here, guys. Once you get the regular amount of enemies into a more manageable number, you need to figure out exactly what the priority needs to be between the nightmare or the rest of the wolves and boars. Quite frankly, I killed most of the wolves and boars in this fight before I took on the nightmare, but sometimes fighting the nightmare before you fight the rest of the wolves and boars is better considering the nightmare has a ranged attack that does moderate damage as well as apply terror, and it continuously creates that binding of terror debuff that's going to be quite a bit of a pain to manage while you're fighting all these other wolves and boars. The other mechanic that the nightmare has is every time you deal damage to it, or attack it rather, you will get a stack of terror applied to yourself. So for example, my warrior here, which I used Rampage on the nightmare, he gained three stacks of terror. Getting five stacks of terror isn't the end of the world. Your unit doesn't die. Your unit simply runs away. It doesn't trigger an attack of opportunity or anything like that. They basically teleport out of the battlefield and you'll pick them up as soon as you leave the battle. So don't be too scared of terror. The only time to be scared of terror is when you're still fighting you know, two full waves of wolves and boars and you can't manage it properly and then you start losing units to terror stacks and you're not able to actually recover from that. That's the time to be worried about it. But I had plenty of units here available for me. I decided that I wanted to take out the nightmare in this one turn with just two units. So I went ahead and used my warrior, used every attack I had available with my warrior onto the nightmare. It caused my warrior to run away, but then I finished it up up with my rogue or ranger my bad and then decided to clean up the rest of the wolves and boars afterwards anyway guys i hope this video helps in some way shape or form on how to handle the ghost pack and lower levels and if you enjoyed this content would like to see more videos such as this like the video drop a comment make that number go up and i hope to see you all in my comment section or live stream chat sometime soon until next time have a good one